Now as we come to these Lexio Divina meditations, as we approach our divine reading, we may encounter challenges and that's common and it's regular. You might expect it and that's okay. Obstacles on page 12. Do not be alarmed if you encounter obstacles to your meditations. And remember that the daily rhythm is only a guide. Go at God's pace, which might not be daily. Here are some examples of potential obstacles. One, mistaking divine reading for Bible study. Being caught up in what words mean or scriptural context, it keeps you in the head rather than in the heart. So let go of study and biblical analysis, which is another worthy endeavor. It's not Lexio Divina, it's not divine reading. So let go of that. For the heart to open to the divine reading. 2. Ignoring life context. Remember your life context. Be mindful of how the Bible passage that you're reading relates to certain aspects of your life, because it will. And notice the feelings, thoughts and emotions that arrive at this time. Three, remember these are obstacles to your meditation, being cut off from emotions. It is important to acknowledge emotions that rise and fall, even the uncomfortable or painful ones. Without dwelling on them, notice how they add to your life context in relation to the scriptural passage. But just notice it. Ah, huh. in other words, it gives us more information about how the passage is speaking into our life, what God wants us to hear in that passage, and our emotion is contributing to the talk about the context of our life in that passage. So four, hurrying, slow down, slow down. Divine reading is not a race, but a contemplation. Trusting God's timing. Revelation may not happen in the meditation, but days or even weeks later. And this is a good one to slow down. We really need to give ourselves time for the meditation. We need to ensure that we're not going to be interrupted, that we're not squeezing in a 10-minute meditation before work or before getting the children ready for school. We need to have that time that leisurely space to be able to sit and rest in the word, to be able to contemplate. Five, be kind. How you know and experience God is unique to you. Be kind with yourself in the daily process. Give yourself every measure of harmonious support, even if you fall asleep. And believe me, people do. We all do. We come to rest after a busy day. We have that space that we don't often have in a day. We attend to our reading and our contemplating. And before we know it, minutes have passed 
and we have had our eyes closed, deeply rested, asleep. That's okay. It is. Sometimes God simply wants you to rest in the Spirit. And sometimes the word of God permeates through us when we've shut off from the world, when we've closed down into sleep. The reflections of the word gently move around in that space of restfulness of sleep. Embrace that. Number six is doubting and skepticism. This is probably the one, the main one. It's certainly the challenge that I get asked about most often. Of all the obstacles, this is on page 13, of all the obstacles to God's grace, doubt and skepticism are the most damaging, let us say the most limiting. Did I really hear that word? Am I making it up? Was it real? Skepticism immediately separates us from God in the moment. Any word God has for us is lost to doubt. Please, <laughs> please allow God. And if you have doubts, take them to a spiritual director or companion, a friend whom you can trust, and pray on them together or check it out in Scripture, check it out in the Word. See if there's a precedent for what you've been taught. But do that afterward, not at the time. At the time, your doubt, your intervention of skepticism, it leaves you abandoned to the word. We can't hear it. We don't absorb it because we're caught up in our worry, in our concern, in our narrative that tells us, was that really God? Please park that. Come to it later. Let the divine reading continue. Let the process continue. The seventh obstacle is limiting God. It may be tempting to stop the meditations after one revelation. Aha, that's what that means. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I now know that God is speaking into my life this way. I'm going to do that. Thank you, Jesus. And you pop the book down and that's you done. No, no. <laughs> God has many words for us. Many words, lifelong words, continuing words. Let us pick up our reading again. Let us embrace the word again. Page 14. You received a word from God and amazed by the insight in your life, you rest content in the meditative process. The Holy Spirit continues to do works in and for us continues and we must say yes here I am Lord here I am God the fruit of the Spirit is adventuring to make your soul my soul our souls a permanent home for divine illumination and for the fruit of the Spirit let your prayer be more, Holy Spirit, give me more. <laughs>